let's say you're going through a situation, maybe you've done club hopping, you're with a particular organization, and on a scale of one to 10, you wanna give this organization that you're currently with five or less. Five or less would be 50% or lower. That's not a high number, obviously. That means, you know, and I'm really talking about from a value perspective of what you're paying to what you're receiving. So if you're on a scale of one to 10 and you're below, you're at five or below, that means the value that you're actually getting back is significantly less than the cost that you're paying. So obviously a 10 would be like, compared to what you're paying, that's the value, you're getting like two, three X the value or in value, I should say. And like the thing is, if you're not gonna be paying for, or if you are paying for something and you're not getting the value back, why continue? And you'll probably argue and say, well, where else am I supposed to go? Good question. Now, I've always told you guys, hey, find a coach, don't look for a club or a or a badge, right? None, none of those are gonna solve your problem. You have to find a coach that cares about your son or your daughter's development. And there's not a lot of them, I can't lie to you, I can't tell you that there's multiple people that want to develop kids, there's not. Most people just wanna take, one. But two, you're gonna to have to take time and reflect and really think about where that best fit is because, and I said this before, if your child is not, not a generational talent, so, and I don't like to say this, but I will in this circumstance, your child is not like the next Phil Foden or the next Marcus Rashford or even higher than that, maybe the next Lionel Messi. Right? I don't like saying the next, but I think it's just, to, it's just to give you a point. So if your child is not that, then what they do before 15 years old doesn't really matter. Like I really want you guys to understand that. And it's just about developing them until the 15 year old point, and then it matters. And you know, that's what I'm saying. Like you need to take your time, reflect. So like you can leave a club, leave the organization and relax. Like maybe you take a month off and just think about like, where can we, improve or where can you find somebody that actually cares about your kid getting better and you don't have to have that answer today tomorrow the next day you can take a 30-day break from club soccer before you get back into it and i just think that's going to be such a beneficial aspect for you as a parent and a player because it lets you take a step back and, and look at it from a different perspective and allow you to really evaluate you know where can i put my child that's in the best interest of him or her and the key is always this, you need to find a coach that cares about developing kids. And you need three things. You need a player bought in and wants to get there. You need a parent that is bought in and then you need a coach that is bought in. If you don't have all three, it is very, very, very hard. And I would say borderline impossible, not impossible, but borderline impossible for your child to actually have a chance of getting to the next level because you don't have all the three elements. You need the three. I, I I don't think I've seen one yet where you have just a player, just a parent, and not the coach or vice versa. Like there might be some circumstances where maybe you can have the player and the coach and not a parent. That might be possible, but you know, dirt, you know, based on current demographics and logistical pieces, it's very hard to get around. For example, I live in Orlando and there's a bunch of like small little towns it's very hard to get around if you don't have a vehicle and you need a mom and dad to take you there. Like we have one kid in our program who's exceptional, very, very good, could be a beast, but he doesn't have the commitment from his mom and his dad to get him to practice. So it's impossible for this kid. It's been the same way for years. Like he's a good kid, unbelievable talent from Venezuela and the kid just can't play because he can't get there. And there's nobody that's close enough to give him a ride. So it's, it's hard, man, like it's a tough situation. But th those are the key things to look for. And like, you know, again, take a step back, breathe, don't panic, and it's okay. Like, you know, somebody asked me the question, Kyle, what do you think about my son not playing club and just training? There's nothing wrong with that. Like, it's okay. Like, you need to develop your son or your daughter to have a certain level anyways. They need to be able to dribble well with both feet. They need to be able to pass well with both feet. They need to be able to receive the ball well with both feet. And they need to be able to dribble somebody one versus one with both feet. You know, if you look at top level, and I said top level, this is a key word, top level professionals, they can all do all four. Very, very well. Exceptionally well, proficiently well, masterfully well. 
And if you don't have those skill sets, it's going to be hard and you need to have the buy-in. The buy-in is going to be the most important piece to, to get to these things. And then it's like, from a situational standpoint, you know, let, let's look at high school, right? So like, okay, let's say your kid plays ECNL, you're decently happy, you know, maybe it's a six or a seven, maybe eight if you get in there and you get to the high school season. Should you play high school? If you know anything about what I say and what I do, then you should not play high school because high school is not designed to develop kids. Um, it's just, it's a cram schedule. Most of the time the coaches are, most of the time the coaches are just like teachers. They're not actual coaches. There are some, right? I mean, it, it does sometimes exist, but on a typical scale, unless you go to like a school, a sports specific school, you know, then you're going to get, you know, real training and real development and real process. Like I was a high school coach. And I can tell you, we had three kids on the team that were competitive players. Everybody else was recreational, and this was varsity, by the way. So across the board, I don't think high school has level. So the point is, East Snell purposely takes a break during the high school season. So that way, kids can go play high school. So one, you're adding an extreme amount of games to an already busy schedule, which means you're going to play 11 or 12 months without even taking a break. And then two, you know, my recommendation is, unless you can get on a – unbelievably good high school then take a break it, it is okay take a break take a step back reflect evaluate rest focus on the individual needs like i'm talking about and just try and make better decisions in those regards because that's what is going to make the difference at the end of the day is, is having that process and those checklists and those movements and those pieces and sometimes the kid does need to take a break and that's just you know things to, to think about because you know and I'll touch up on this in another video, but I'll add it here as well. You know, kids should not be playing more than probably, I would say, maximum eight games a month. Like, and I think that's a high number. Like, one game a week is good. I know you have some tournaments and stuff. Sometimes you have different structures. But, like, one game a week is okay. That would be four games a month. That's okay. Like, they should not really be doing more than that. That's what I'm saying. Eight, if you're doubling it, okay. But when you're talking about... And I see some teams and kids that are playing 15, 20, 30 games. I've seen upwards of 30 games in a month. Like, dude, that's too much. The kids don't get a chance to rest and recover. And then you wonder why their performance isn't always there. They're playing too much. But that, that's another video I'll do. So hopefully that makes sense. You know, the too long don't read is take a step back, especially if you're not happy with your organization. Take a month off, if not longer. Focus on the individual development. And look evaluate and process your next best move by finding a coach not a team or a badge so i hope that helps i'll see you in the next video and if this is beneficial to you i just please help share the content help share this with somebody that you think could find value because i'm spending hours of my day putting this stuff together to help you make better decisions with these frameworks so i hope that helps and uh, i would greatly appreciate the time that I'm putting in because this content's free for you to share it with somebody.